All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Martin. I'm from Quantstamp. I'm a senior research engineer and the head of new initiatives. And I will be telling you about the properties of bridges that I really like. So before I do that, uh, we should all understand what a bridge really is, right? So let me do that. So when I say a bridge, I kind of sort of want you to understand this type of an architecture. We have two chains, my mother chain, for you know, all intent and purposes, this will be Ethereum. And then we have another chain. And we want to get our assets from one chain to the other chain. So for this purpose, we have something that I call a custodian. This is where me will lock some assets, some ether. Then we have an off-chain component called a communicator that is going to be watching what I have locked in the custodian. And it's going to instruct some liquidity pool on the other chain to uh, send me the assets that I want to have bridged. The way how this really happens differs uh, case by case. Some bridges issue some debt tokens. Some bridges work with real liquidity pool on the other chain and just send me the assets. Then this was the deposit on the withdrawal. The process is exactly the opposite. So the communicator is actually going to be watching the debt issuer where I will be burning my tokens, the debt tokens. And that then is going to instruct the custodian to send me back the ETH that I want to have bridged back. Okay. So this is the mental model that I want you to maintain when I speak about bridges. So now I'm going to give you the properties, the menu of the properties that I like uh, about bridges when they have them. So first of all, we develop bridges because we have other chains. Many of the other chains are sort of trying to speed up Ethereum, right? But you know, if the bridge takes ages to bridge my assets from one chain to the other one, then this is not really the user experience that I want to have. So what I really want from a bridge is the speed. Then the next thing that I really want is finality. That means that once the assets are bridged from one side to the other one or from the other side back, this is final. Nobody is going to reorg. Nobody is going to bring those assets back. They are just not going to disappear. The next, th next thing that I really appreciate is atomicity. So that would mean that there is no moment uh, in time where I do not hold the assets. I have them on one chain. And then as soon as this bridging happens atomically, I suddenly have them on the other chain. There is nothing in between where the world could stop, where an asteroid could hit the Earth, and I could lose my assets because you know, I have nobody to call or something like that. But this is actually really hard. There is something called atomic swaps. But you know, that's a really, really complicated protocol. So you know, atomicity is something that I long for, but it's really hard to accomplish. Then, you know, very obviously, I want my bridges to be secure because nobody really likes losing assets. If you do, uh, please talk to me after the talk. You must be a very special kind of a human being, uh, but we usually want the bridges to be secure. Then what do we long for in general in the Web3 space is censorship resistance. That means that anybody should be able to use the bridge. Then we certainly also want availability, meaning that it doesn't matter whether it's 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. or 1 a.m. or whatever, I should be able to use the bridge right now if I wish to do so. Then I also want liveness. Liveness means that if I instruct the bridge to move the assets from one chain to the other chain, at some point, this is going to happen. The bridging will never get stuck. On the other hand, sometimes we also want possibility. Because if one of the chains is in troubles, you know, there is a hack there, or the bridge itself has problems, then sometimes it really helps when we can stop the time, when we can freeze everything and do some crisis resolution or something like that, right? Next thing that I really want is liquidity. So, you know, I might be a very rich person. I might choose to today bridge $100 million. And if I choose to do so, I would really like to be able to do so. And that can happen only if the bridge is sufficiently liquid. Uh, the next thing that I like to have is what I call expressive power. So I want to be able to bridge my native assets, that means Ether, but I also want to be able to bridge a bunch of stable coins and other tokens, right? Maybe NFTs, so all the ERC20s, ERC721s, ERC1155s. What I'm really saying here, I want the bridge to actually be able to perform cross-chain smart contract calls. Then I want my bridges to be cost efficient because, you know, I don't like to spend money on gas. Right. But 
Sometimes we don't really have the option to do anything about that because we are intera interacting with two chains. The transactions have to be paid for on both the chains, right? But it would be nice if the bridges were not adding any additional cost overhead to that. Then privacy is also often desired. Imagine a mixer uh, where you know, I send money in on one chain and they magically show up on the other chain in a different account uh, and nobody can connect the transactions together. And then the last thing that I really like is transparency and auditability. That means that if I'm watching the bridge, at any point of time I can convince myself that the bridge is actually functioning properly, that it is not you know, sending money around without any reason, without it being instructed to do so. So this was the menu. Now, the main point of this lightning talk is this is actually really hard. There are always conflicts between all these properties that we would like to have. For example, speed and finality, they are conflicting. If I want my bridge to be final, or the bridging process to be final, then the finality has to be reached on two chains independently, right? Uh, but that's probably not going to be pa fast. Similarly, if I'm talking about availability and pausing, well, once a bridge gets paused, it's not really available, right? It's not accepting any transactions. I cannot bridge at this moment. Same thing with security and liquidity. Sometimes, uh, you know, bridges are really liquid, but we don't really like to have all the assets sitting in some smart contract that potentially could be exploited on one or the other chain, right? So therefore, bridge operators very often limit the liquidity. They take the assets, they move them into some escrows, cold wallets, and similar things. So there are always a bunch of trade-offs. You have to pick and choose what you are going to implement. Uh, this slide is actually, you know, screaming with QR codes. So this QR code leads to our talk from ETH Denver about security incidents in bridges. And this particular uh, QR code leads to uh, a paper about security hacks and incidents in bridges. That's everything I had to say. Uh, if you want to talk to me uh, during DEF CON or any time later, this is uh, my telegram. Thank you.